The Kamei Botany Bay National Park is a heritage-listed protected national park that is located in the Sydney metropolitan region of New South Wales, in eastern Australia. The 456-hectare national park is situated approximately 16 kilometres southeast of the Sydney Central Business District, on the northern and southern headlands of Botany Bay. The northern headland is at La Perouse and the southern headland is at Colonel. The visitor attraction Natural Conservation and Heritage Conservation Area at Cape Salander Drive is also known as Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Tora Point Nature Reserve. La Perouse Monument, Tomb of Pere Rasvour, Macquarie Watchtower, and Cable Station. The property is owned by NSW Office of Environment and Heritage and managed by the NSW National Parks and Wildlife Service, both agencies of the Government of New South Wales. Kamei Botany Bay was added to the New South Wales State Heritage Register on November 29, 2013, and was added to the Australian National Heritage List on September 10, 2017. It is also included in a UNESCO World Heritage Serial nomination The Rise of Systemic Biology. The area is recognised for its outstanding cultural and historic heritage values to Australia. It is a place where botanist Sir Joseph Banks and naturalist Dr. Daniel Solander collected plant specimens in 1770 as part of the first landing of the endeavour in Australia. Banks and Solander collected many iconic Australian plant species, including some that later became type specimens which have important scientific and research value. Botany Bay lies within a small tectonic depression known as the Botany Basin which in turn is situated within the larger Sydney Basin comprising modified sedimentary deposits laid down about 270 million years ago during the Permian period. The northern and southern headlands featuring Hawkesbury sandstone cliffs which were formed during the Triassic period, between 200 and 250 million years ago. On the Colonel Peninsula, about 20,000 years ago at the height of the Ice Age the Colonel Headland was a sandstone hill. The old dunes formed much of what is now Botany Bay and the Colonel Headland. Between 18,000 and 10,000 years ago as the sea level rose seagrass, salt marsh and mangroves developed and moved inland. The first evidence of indigenous occupation of the area appears to be about 12,000 years ago. At this time the swales of the old dunes contained swamps. By 7,400 years ago the sea level stopped rising and the cliffs and rock platforms at Colonel were eroded by wave action to form sheer cliffs. Between 9,000 and 6,000 years ago the Colonel Isthmus began to form as the mud and sand of the Georges River built up. The locations now known as Silver Beach and Bonapoint Point were subject to a build-up of sand from about 6,500 years ago. At about the same time a series of parallel dunes formed behind Bait Beach and Tora Point as the Georges River estuary shifted and sand and mud was dropped to the north of the Colonel Isthmus. The mud and sand deposit breached sea level and a dune formed on the deposit. This dune was vegetated with Colonel Dune Forest, Treed Wetland, Littoral Rainforest, Mangroves, Shokes and Salt Marsh. From 4,500 years ago swamps developed in the low parts of the dunes and a series of moving dunes formed as a result of violent weather events. These new dunes covered the peninsula, and the tidal flats of Botany Bay. Here again, swamps formed in these new dunes allowing soils and dune forest to develop. As these dunes eroded, Sandstone was exposed and eventually sandstone heath colonized that area. Between 3,000 and 2,000 years ago the sea level dropped to current levels. Most archaeological evidence relates to indigenous occupation in the area from about 3,000 to 2,000 years ago. People living to the south of Botany Bay to Naura were of the Darawal language group. The people moving through and living in the Colonel area were the northernmost clan of the Darawal speakers, the Gwigal. On the northern headland the people were most likely Katagal people of the Darug language group. The people living on the headlands and shores at the entrance to Botany Bay benefited from the many food and other resources and the mild climate of the area. On both shorelines are many midden sites providing evidence of the rich variety of seafoods enjoyed by the indigenous people, aside from the reptiles and mammals which also lived in the heath and forests. Fishing was the major source of food for the indigenous people of the area. Fish hooks were made from turban shells and fishing lines and nets were also made from bark and native grasses. Timber from the forests at Colonel and La Perouse provided bark for huts, canoes, coolamans, and lomandra leaves were woven together to make bags. Many of the local plants were edible such as the roots of the common fern and warrigal, a spinach-like leafy plant that grew along the local freshwater streams on both northern and southern headlands. Other foods included the nectar from banksia flowers and witch grubs which lived in the stems of banksia and wattle. 
Because of its bountiful resources, the North and South Hetlands of Botany Bay were important ceremonial gathering places for the Darawal on the south of Botany Bay and the Darug on the northern shores. At Colonel there are several important ceremonial sites including a Bora ring used for rites and an ochre pit located near the current site of the oil refinery which provided pigment for such ceremonies. Colonel was possibly a semi-permanent home for the Gweagle. A marker tree distinguished by a ring-shaped hole in its trunk marks the site of a women's camp. The area also contains carved trees from which the bark for canoes and kulumans were taken in a women's birthing site indicating the intensive use of the area by the pre-contact Gweagle community. Aboriginal ancestral remains have been reburied in the park. These remains, taken from the Botany Bay region, were stored in various museum collections until repatriation. For Aboriginal people, the return of ancestors remains to country is highly significant because it then reunites ancestors with country. Similarly, the La Perouse section of the park contains evidence of everyday lives of Aboriginal people before European settlement including Middens and engravings which illustrate the everyday observations and preoccupations of the indigenous people pre-European contact. In the days preceding April 29, 1770 Darawal people of the southern coastal area between Naura and Colonel observed a large white bird or floating island which was Lt. James Cook's endeavor. As it passed along the coast towards the headlands of Kameh. Further south the Yuan people attributed their sightings of the endeavor to Gurung Gubba the pelican of their dreamtime stories. The Endeavour entered Botany Bay and lay anchor opposite the location of a small bark hut village on the southern shores of Kameh Botany Bay, in what is now Silver Beach. Here James Cook and some of his crew prepared to land on the shores of Weagle Country. It is now understood that Cook's bold arrival and landing on Darawal land was a severe breach of indigenous etiquette, and an affront to the traditional owners of the land at Colonel and was the cause of the events that then unfolded. In traditional Aboriginal culture it is customary for visitors to wait to be invited to approach the custodians of that area so when Cook and his men landed, the local people attempted to discourage the strangers from entering land, two warriors painted in ceremonial ochre threatened the British with spears to which Cook ordered either one or two muskets fired. One shot found its mark and hit one of the warriors who ran to find a shield and continued the defense of his country. As Cook and his party landed, a spear was thrown by one of the warriors before they retreated and commenced to ignore the intruders for the entire time the British were anchored in the bay. This according to Nugent is consistent with the customary right of country owners to demand to meet visitors on their own terms. During the following eight days the passengers and crew of the Endeavour explored the shores and hinterland areas around Botany Bay. The main purpose of visiting Botany Bay was to obtain fresh water for the next leg of the journey. On the second day of their stay, Cook and his men found a stream located near the Bark Hut village from which they replenished the ship's water supplies. The stream still flows today. The location of the Endeavour's landfall and Cook's claim of the east coast of the continent for Britain is now commonly known as Captain Cook's Landing Place. One of the most significant activities undertaken that week was the botanical collecting undertaken by Sir Joseph Banks and Daniel Solander, the brilliant young pupil of Carolus Linnaeus. On completing his studies in Sweden, Solander traveled to England to promote the Linnean system of classification and soon took up a position classifying collections at the British Museum. He was employed by Banks in 1768 to assist him on Cook's voyage of exploration. Banks and Solander collected many plant and animal specimens at Botany Bay, including many which had not been collected or described previously and became the type specimens of species and genera, including the Banksia, named for Joseph Banks. Much of the collection work was carried out near the landing place and in the area now known as Tora Point and its wetlands, and on the northern shore of Botany Bay. The extent and quality of the specimens collected led Cook to name the Bay Botany Bay in acknowledgement of the important work undertaken by Banks and Solander. Besides being described and classified by Solander, every specimen was sketched by Sidney Parkinson. These sketches were rendered as watercolors when Banks and Solander returned to England and then engraved and later included in the publication Banks Flora Legion. On January 18, 1788, 18 years after the first visit by the British, Governor Arthur Philip arrived at Botany Bay with the first fleet where it was intended to establish the first British settlement in the colony. While anchored in Botany Bay a number of officers established seemingly friendly contact with the Aboriginal people, exchanging whistling tunes, confirming humanity and gender and exchanging gifts. And on the southern shores by introducing a child traveling with the fleet to the Aboriginal people there. Philip was disappointed at the lack of water on the shores of the bay and dismayed by the large numbers of Aboriginal people inhabiting the place. 
By January 26, 1788 Philip had left Botany Bay and sailed for Port Jackson where the first settlement in Australia was made. At the same time, Botany Bay was visited by the French expedition under the command of Jean-Francois Galeup de la Peraus whose frigates, La Boussole and Astrolabe anchored near Frenchman's Beach on January 24, 1788. Captain Hunter of the First Fleet established contact with the French in the absence of Governor Philip. The French ships had sailed from Samoa where they had been involved in a battle with the Samoans. Numerous people on both sides were killed and injured. One of those injured in the event was the expedition's priest and naturalist, Père Risfour. Risfour died at La Perouse on February 17, 1788 and was the first French person to be buried on the mainland. He was interred in a headland grave marked with a common headstone. In 1829, a tomb was erected over the site of his grave. The French spent six weeks at La Perouse during which time they repaired damage done during the Samoan battle. An observatory was established on the northern headland for the use of Joseph Leput Dagalet whose observations and scientific experiments are among the first European scientific endeavours in Australia. Dagalet undertook calculations on map positions of Botany Bay and carried out astronomical observations, which he later shared with Englishman William Dawes. The departure of Philip and then Laperaus from Botany Bay marked a period of time where, at least on the southern shores of the bay, Aboriginal people did not come into much contact with Europeans. Colonel Headland was a remote spot and was not subject to a land grant until 1815. On the northern shores of the bay, the La Perouse Peninsula remained relatively unsettled until the 1860s and 1880s when a pioneering fishing community worked the waters at Botany Bay and lived in La Perouse. While their land was not immediately settled by Europeans, white colonization had a profound impact on the people of the area, the most significant being the spread of disease such as smallpox. There are caves at Little Bay just north of the northern section of the Botany Bay National Park and also a cave on Cape Salander in the southern section of the park in which it is believed that skeletal remains from these outbreaks were found. This has not been confirmed. By 1830, the land which is now the northern section of Botany Bay National Park was dedicated as a government reserve. From about 1820, a small contingent of government troops were stationed at La Perouse headland to scout for the unexpected arrival of ships and to monitor and control smuggling activity. By 1822, these troops were housed in Macquarie's Tower, a sandstone castellated watchtower. From 1829, when the monuments to La Perouse and Pierre Risfour were erected, the watchtower was used as accommodation for a caretaker employed to look after the La Perouse monument and the tomb of Pierre Risfour. These monuments are still frequently visited by the French and are the site of events such as a memorial ceremony on Bastille Day each year, Mass de Père Risfour and Le Day. In 1831, the watchtower was acquired by the Customs Department to house a tide waiter, or customs officer, and two boatmen who manned the La Perouse Customs House outstation. By 1869, in response to the perceived threat of armed attack by foreign forces, a program to bolster the colony's defences was in place and a military road was constructed to the La Perouse headland. By 1871 a gun battery was in place on Henry Head and in 1881 a large mass concrete fort was under construction on Bear Island and was operational by 1890. In 1876, La Perouse headland was the site where the overseas underwater telegraphic cable emerged. The first makeshift facility of tents and huts was replaced in 1881 by a brick cable station sited centrally on the west of the headland overlooking Frenchman's Beach. After 1917 when it was no longer used as offices for the telegraph company it became a nurse's home and later a home run by the Salvation Army most recently it is used as the La Perouse Museum. Many Aboriginal people who had traditionally lived in the La Perouse area left after the establishment of European settlement but by the 1870s Aboriginal people including descendants from families associated with La Perouse and Botany Bay, along with Aboriginal people from the South Coast, began to return to the area. When George Thornton, the government's protector of Aborigines, started removing Aboriginal people from urban areas he was successfully lobbied by a group from La Perouse who were allowed to remain at the La Perouse camp. Thornton even constructed huts for them at the camp, justifying the decision to Parliament by arguing that the camp was economically viable. By 1881 there were two camps with 35 Aboriginal people recorded to be living at La Perouse and a further 15 in Botany Bay within the boundaries of what is today Kame Botany Bay National Park. In 1881, there was an outbreak of smallpox in the colony. To deal with the epidemic an isolation hospital was established at Little Bay which became known as the Coast Hospital and later in 1934 became Prince Henry Hospital. 
Associated with the Coast Hospital is the Coast Cemetery which is located south of the hospital and now is enclosed by Kamei Botany Bay National Park. The Coast Hospital Cemetery is an Aboriginal place and is an important burial, repatriation, and reburial site for the La Perus and Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Councils and Darawal Aboriginal people. In 1881, the first part of the Coast Hospital Cemetery was opened. This section was used until 1897, when a northern burial section was established and used until 1952. The cemetery was used as a burial ground for the La Perus Aboriginal Reserve, though, the cemetery was predominantly used as a burial ground for infectious disease patients from Prince Henry Hospital. There are 90 marked graves in the Coast Hospital Cemetery, though it is estimated that up to 3,000 people are buried there. The area was selected as an Aboriginal repatriation and reburial site because of its long-standing significance to the local Aboriginal people. The cemetery contains the burials of several family members. Aboriginal ancestral remains were reburied within the Darawal resting place in 2002 and 2005. Members of the La Perouse and Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Councils and other Darawal descendants regularly visit the area, maintaining close connections to country and ancestors. A small Anglican Aboriginal mission was established in the area in 1885 and a church built in 1894. In 1895 the camp at Frenchman's Bay, La Perouse was gazetted as an Aboriginal reserve. The people who lived there worked as fishermen, in the Chinese gardens, at the timber mills and wool washes in the area or made boomerang and other artifacts for sale to tourists who flocked to the area after the construction of the tramway to La Perouse at the turn of the century. Many women and children crafted shell decorations for sale. During the Great Depression, La Perouse was the site of a shanty town known as Happy Valley which was located within the boundaries of the Botany Bay National Park behind Kongwong Beach. Those who arrived at Happy Valley simply selected a spot and erected their home from corrugated iron or whatever could be found. Reputedly there was a lot of positive interaction between residents at Happy Valley and those on the Aboriginal Reserve. While life was hard at Happy Valley some residents reveled in the carefree existence where without a job one could swim at the beach all day. In 1939, after intense lobbying by the neighboring golf club, Randwick Council moved all the residents to more suitable accommodation and demolished the shanty town. During the 1960s, a wave of new white residents arrived at La Perouse and lobbied for the removal of the reserve at Yarra Bay. The Aboriginal community has resisted these efforts and the La Perouse community remains one of the strongest and most established Aboriginal communities in Sydney. In 1815, Governor Macquarie made a grant of 700 acres of land to James Burney at Colonel. Here he established a farm, raising vegetables and stock and constructing a homestead on the site of the current Alpha House near Captain Cook's Landing Place in the Kamei Botany Bay National Park. In 1821, Another grant was made of 1,000 acres at the nearby Quibre Bay to John Connell, a free settler who arrived in NSW in 1801 and set up a large ironmongery in Sydney. When in 1828 Burney was declared insane, Connell bought Alpha Farm and by 1838 he owned almost the entire Colonel Peninsula. His grandson John inherited the estate on John Sr.'s death in 1851. He cleared the land heavily and sold the timber to the Sydney market. Facing financial ruin in 1860, John Connell Jr. mortgaged his land holdings at Colonel to Thomas Holt who took ownership in 1861. Holt, a successful wool merchant and member of the Legislative Council, was a prominent and influential figure in NSW. Holt established a scientific oyster farming program at Quibre Bay. Attempted to raise sheep on specially planted pastures of imported grass and dabbled in timber getting and even coal mining on the Colonel Peninsula. This work was done with the assistance of many employees including a number of Aboriginal people including William Rowley, a Guigal man, who was also an enterprising local fisherman born at Tora Point. Despite Holt's efforts at Colonel none of the enterprises were very successful and by 1881 he began subdividing the estate. Even this exercise was not successful and a number of unsold lots within the current national park were set aside as a public reserve in the 1899 along with an area similarly reserved at an earlier date. The reserve, totaling 100 hectares at the time, was managed by a trust under the auspices of the Department of Lands. From the 1820s Captain Cook's Landing Place was a popular destination for people with an interest in European history in Australia. Many people visited various places of interest such as the Plaquette Inscription Point which had been installed by the Philosophical Society of Australasia in the early 1820s. 
In 1870 Thomas Holt erected Cook's obelisk to mark the European arrival at Botany Bay. To cope with the area's increasing visitation Holt built the first wharf at Colonel just adjacent to the obelisk and a steam ferry began to operate some time around 1882. The reserve was the responsibility of the Department of Lands up until 1967 and was managed by a trust right up until 1974. The trust employed a caretaker and field staff to maintain the reserve. It also spent considerable time and money on siting and erecting monuments to Cook and his crew. In 1918 the Trust erected the Solander Obelisk and in 1947 the Banks Memorial. A cottage was erected on the site of the first Alpha farmhouse which provided accommodation for visitors as well as for the reserve caretaker whose wife operated a kiosk from the kitchen. In the years after World War II, while under the management of the Trust, the area became a hugely popular holiday destination for campers. Families who faithfully returned to camp there each year set up semi-permanent camps in small timber cabins and tents painted with calcimine for weatherproofing and with stoves, and camp beds. Most of their food they brought with them but fresh milk was sourced daily from the caretaker's wife who managed a herd of cows which roamed the reserve. Holiday camping at the park continued until around 1977 when the NSW National Parks and Wildlife Service discontinued this use and disposed of the semi-permanent dwellings. Like at La Perouse, the Colonel section of Botany Bay National Park had a shanty town. This was established in the cliff overhangs and caves overlooking the Pacific Ocean at Cape Salander and Tabajai Gap. The earliest dwelling was built in 1919 and others were constructed during the Great Depression in the 1930s. These dwellings were constructed of tin and timber, and stoves and other homewares were installed to make the place comfortable. They continued to be used during the 1940s, 1950s and 1960s by recreational fishermen and local eccentrics. The Aboriginal people of La Perouse retained a strong link with the Colonel section of the Botany Bay National Park throughout the 20th century. Colonel was a frequent destination for family groups who would travel over by ferry and spend the day fishing, swimming, foraging for bush foods. The banks of Cook's stream was a source of warrigal greens and further afield one could find five corner berries, wombat berries and sarsaparilla. Sonny Sims who grew up at La Perouse in the 1930s and 1940s recalled that the resources of the bay, its fish and shellfish, were an important supplement to the family's food resources when his father left and his mother became the sole provider for her family of nine children. The family would travel to Colonel where their mother taught them how to catch fish, lobster and abalone. The fish caught would be cooked up in an old five-gallon drum and eaten on the spot. Other resources found in the park and at Tora Point were the mangrove knees which up until the late 1960s were harvested to make boomerangs for the tourist trade. The shells for the La Perouse women's shell craft work were collected from the beach at Wanda. The huge sand dunes and their large freshwater ponds were a strong memory for Sunny Sims who as a child regularly swam in these. The dunes survived relatively unaffected up until the 1950s when the oil refinery was established there. It was not until the Sydney building boom in the late 1960s and 1970s that the demand for sand resulted in the dunes becoming degraded by sand mining over much of the Colonel Peninsula. In 1967 the reserve at Colonel was handed over to the National Parks and Wildlife Service which, besides its environmental charter, had custody of historic sites of which Captain Cook's landing place at Colonel was one. By 1974 National Parks and Wildlife Service was able to take on the full management of the park and the reserve trust was disbanded. The Botany Bay National Park was finally gazetted in 1988. Under the management of National Parks and Wildlife Service much work has been done to redress the balance in articulating the Aboriginal and European historical and cultural values of the place. This is evidenced in the renaming of the long-standing Commemoration Day Ceremony as the Meeting of Cultures Ceremony and the structured involvement of local Aboriginal elders in the ceremony. In addition Aboriginal people have been closely involved in other important events in the park such as the start to the Olympic torch relay in 2000 which was commenced by one of the Aboriginal park rangers. A significant amount of work has been done to the interpret the history and connections of the site in particular in the opening of interpretive walks and the reopening of the freshwater stream. Perhaps the most significant events to have been held in the park in recent years have been the repatriation burials. These events are of great importance to the local Aboriginal community as local elders received back the remains of their ancestors from public institutions where they were studied and regarded as curiosities to their own land. The La Perouse Museum Precinct, Botany Bay National Park to be reinvigorated with NSW government and Randwick City Council moving to lease the historic site. The total area of the proposed listing is 878 hectares. 
492 hectares of the listing comprises Kame Botany Bay National Park which is situated on the north and south sandstone headlands of Botany Bay. The headlands create the dramatic entrance to Botany Bay which is located about 14 kilometers south of the center of Sydney. The listing boundary also includes the Tora Point Nature Reserve, an area of 386. 4 hectares of wetlands located to the west of Colonel Village in Botany Bay. Kongwong Beach approximately 168 hectares of Kamei Botany Bay National Park is located on the northern headland and includes Cape Banks, the coastland at Krui Cove. Henry Head, Kongwong Beach, Scrub Covered Dune to Anzac Parade and the peninsula on the northeastern corner of Botany Bay known as La Perouse Headland. As Bear Island and the causeway joining it to the mainland are already listed on the State Heritage Register they are not included in the curtilage of this listing. The coast is characterized by rocky sandstone cliffs demonstrating a fine example of the stratification of Hawkesbury sandstone. The cliff formations are punctuated by large gorges, the result of eroded basalt dikes which formed in the sedimentary rock in the early tertiary period. The sandy soils are covered with diverse vegetation comprising over 350 species once common in the eastern suburbs of Sydney including rare species and communities. The most common vegetation cover is Heath Banksia community, prickly tea tree and paper bark. To the west of the park is a thick covering of coastal tea tree scrub consisting of coast banksia and bangali. In sheltered areas such as behind Little Kongwong Bay lies a low closed forest of smooth barked apple. There are several examples of vegetation communities in the park which are considered rare including the wet heath between Henry Head and Cape Banks and the closed forest around Happy Valley. The stands of eastern suburbs Banksia scrub are considered to be an endangered community. An area of land bordering on Gross Street. Contains over 140 species including plants regarded as rare and the last remaining example of the full diversity of eastern suburbs Banksia scrub. It also contains several endangered freshwater swamps. This part of the park also attracts over 70 species of native birds as well as a number of species of possum, flying fox, bats and snakes. The northern section of Kamei Botany Bay National Park contains a number of sites relating to the pre-contact aboriginal occupation of the place including rock engravings and a number of shell mittens. The La Perouse headland contains significant historic items including, Macquarie Watchtower, La Perouse Monument, Père Rissour's Grave, the cable station which is now the La Perouse Museum. The Coast Cemetery, fortifications including Henry Head Battery and Fort Banks, and the site of the Happy Valley Settlement. The Macquarie Watchtower is a two-story, octagonal Sydney sandstone tower approximately 7 metres tall. The walls are topped by a castellated parapet that was reconstructed c. 1961. The structure has window openings which have been infilled with sandstone blocks and an entry door on the southern facade. The former cable station that now houses La Peraz Museum is a two-story rendered masonry building situated on a grassy knoll of La Perouse headland facing north overlooking Frenchman's Bay. The orientation of the building is attributed to the positioning of the telegraph cable which came ashore at Frenchman's Bay. Designed by the Colonial Architect's Office the building has a single-story veranda on its northern facade and a U-shaped plan. Originally symmetrical the building has had additional bays added to either end of the building. Also situated on the La Perouse headland is a monument to the French expedition of 1788 led by Jean Frenoy de Galeop La Perouse and the grave of Père Risfour. The La Perouse monument has a central obelisk topped by a spherical brass astrolabe. It is mounted on base and surrounded by a low wall topped with a steel picket fence. Numerous plaques have been placed around the monument commemorating the voyages of other French ships. The headstone and tomb of Père Risfour, the priest and naturalist of the French expedition, was erected many years after his death. Initially the grave was marked by an inscription on a tree and over time became more formalized. Behind Kongwang Beach is the location of a former settlement known as Happy Valley that was a collection of shacks erected during the Depression. The shacks have been removed and vegetation has regenerated. There is potential for archaeology dating from this period of occupation. There are coastal fortifications located on Henry Head and Cape Banks designed and constructed by the British Army from the late 19th century onwards. Behind the headland is the original Coast Hospital Cemetery which is now a designated Aboriginal place, the Darawal Resting Place, Coast Hospital Cemetery. Containing approximately 3,000 burials there are some headstones and the remains of a paved stone road to the site. Aboriginal ancestral remains were reburied within the Darawal Resting Place in 2002 and 2005. The southern section of Kamei Botany Bay National Park covers an area of about 324 hectares on the eastern end of the Colonel Peninsula. 
The area of the park to the northeast of Colonel Village is bounded by the waters of Botany Bay and large rock platforms. This area, which is sometimes referred to as the meeting place, extends over approximately 20 hectares of the eastern part of the park. The meeting place precinct contains many items of pre-contact Aboriginal heritage, shell middens, burial sites, a bora ring, birthing tree and other items of Aboriginal heritage significance. It also contains post-contact heritage items of significance to both European and Aboriginal history. The meeting place contains a number of monuments and memorials to Cook, the botanist Solander, Sir Joseph Banks, and Forby Sutherland, an Endeavour crew member who died at Botany Bay. It also contains Alpha House previously known as the Colonel Accommodation House, constructed by the Captain Cook's Landing Place Trust in 1902. The Accommodation House was built on the remains of two earlier dwellings and a cellar of one of these remains beneath the cottage. An important element, historically and environmentally is the stream that flows into Botany Bay near the landing place. It was here that Cook and his party restocked their fresh water supplies under the careful eye of the local Aboriginal people. There have been a number of archaeological excavations in this area and on the flat between the wharf and the stream and in the vicinity of the Alpha House site. The area is considered to have high archaeological potential. The place is marked by a plaque and by more recent interpretive works. To the southern and eastern boundary of the park follows the 40-meter-high Hawkesbury sandstone cliff landscape of Cape Salander which is punctuated by deep narrow gorges at Tabagai Gap and Yenna Gap. Further to the south this rocky coastal boundary gives way to sand dunes which extend south to Potter Point. Within the cliff landscape and dunes of this area there have been archaeological excavations and it is considered these areas also have archaeological potential. Dune landscape characterizes the southern part of the park inland. Vegetation is mainly Colonel Dune Forest which grows on the sand hills which overlook the coast where Cook is said to have landed. There are pockets of dry eucalypt forest on the higher reaches and this forest continues over Cape Salander Drive and up to the sandstone heights approaching the sandstone cliffs falling to the ocean on the east. The area down to Potter's Point supports heath lands on sandstone and heath on dunes, which are characterized by Old Man Banksia, she oak and grass trees. There are also wetlands on sandstone and wetlands in dunes which sustain native grasses, lemon-scented bottlebrush, and heath banksia which are rare in the Sydney region. As well as pockets of dry eucalyptus forest, there are also several pockets of Colonel Dune forest in the southern reaches of the park and important patches of littoral rainforest. Among the diversity of fauna living on the Colonel Peninsula are endangered or vulnerable species. The threatened green and gold bell frog and the threatened tinkling froglet have been recorded in the southern part of the park along with the more common eastern long-necked tortoise. 96 species of bird frequent the scrub, forest wetlands and shores of the Colonel Peninsula. Some of the species noted to be of local, state or regional significance are the Japanese snipe, wimbrel, arctic jaeger, common eastern tern peregrine falcon. Redneck stint, the threatened powerful owl, silver eye, red-browed finch, New Holland honey eater and the superb fairy wren. Within the nature reserve is the Toro Point Keeping Place Aboriginal Place which is an Aboriginal reburial site where ancestral remains have been returned to country. Evidence of past Aboriginal occupation can be found in the local area. Local vegetation is dominated by sclerophyll forest and includes coast banksia and tea tree. The Ramsar listed wetlands reserve of 386 hectares is located on the shores of Botany and Woolaware Bays to the west of Colonel Village. The Torah Point landscape of alluvial and marine sand supports vegetation communities that are now rare in the Sydney region. There are vegetated dunes and coastal banksia woodlands, littoral rainforest patches and stands of rare Bangalee and swamp oak forests. There are also a few stands of the magenta brush cherry, a species listed as vulnerable. Importantly the area contains salt marshes which support a rare sedge, which grows at the edge of the marshes, located on the land side of mangroves. The Tora Point wetlands are home to a large variety of local and migrating wading and shorebird species as well being the second most important breeding site for the Little Tern and the only breeding place in the Sydney region. Other species which live in the wetlands include the Pied Oyster Catcher, Tarek Sandpiper and the Peregrine Falcon. All of which are listed as threatened in NSW. Full details of the vegetation communities at Tora Point can be found in Tora Point Nature Reserve Plan of Management. A number of memorials, commemorating Australia's history are located at the entrance to the Colonel Peninsula portion of the park. This area has a coast walk connecting the memorials, and is near the Information Centre and a museum. The Colonel Peninsula portion includes much of the eastern half of the promontory, 
adjacent to the Cultex oil refinery. The area is bordered by sandstone cliffs, eroded to a few meters above sea level in the north and higher in the south. The highest point is about 100 meters above sea level and there are two mapped lookouts, Colonel Lookout, and Houston Lookout. Hills of dry sclerophyll bushland include Botany Cone at 55 meters Amsel, and Long Nose at 101 meters Amsel. There are many small points and cliff formations and several walking tracks. The car park and lookout at the end of the Yenna track is popular for whale watching in the migration season. Also present in the park is Cape Bailey Light, a lighthouse built in 1950. As of July 29, 2013, Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Tora Point Nature Reserve are of outstanding state heritage significance as a rare place demonstrating the continuous history of occupation of the east coast of Australia. The place holds clear and valuable evidence of indigenous occupation prior to European settlement and the natural history of the state. It is also the place where the shared history of indigenous and non-indigenous Australia began. It was the place where Lt. James Cook first stepped ashore to claim the country for Britain and plays a central role in the European history of arrival. The history of indigenous resistance, dispossession and devastation through illness, land grants, cultivation and development. Traditional Aboriginal custodians of the land and the current Aboriginal community have strong historical association with Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Tora Point Nature Reserve. Buigal warriors resisted the arrival of Cook and continue to be important symbols of Aboriginal resilience. There are two important burial repatriation sites within the curtilage which are designated Aboriginal places and have high social significance for the Aboriginal community. The place is also significant for its historical association with important European explorers and scientists and their life's work. These include James Cook, Joseph Banks, Daniel Solander, Comte de la Perraus, Pere Risfour, and Joseph Lepout Dagalet. It is also associated with the First Fleet and the first governor of NSW, Arthur Phillip. The place is of state significance for the technical achievement of Banks and Solander who during their visit in 1770 made the first. Important collection of fauna and flora from Australia which included some items that had never before been described and classified. Previous archaeological excavations indicate that Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Toro Point Nature Reserve have significance for their high level of archaeological potential. Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Toro Point Nature Reserve have aesthetic value as landmark headlands and natural areas with a collection of historic monuments that, combined, have important symbolism to the state of NSW both northern and southern parts of the National Park. Together with the Nature Reserve, contain a valuable research resource relating to indigenous occupation, the natural history of the state and the early settlement of the colony. Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Tora Point Nature Reserve are of state heritage significance as they contains rare remnant vegetation and flora communities and is a critical link in the network of parks and reserves that conserve the biodiversity of NSW. The La Perouse part the National Park provides evidence of the history of French exploration in the Pacific in the late 19th century and continues to have ongoing cultural associations with the French community today. Kamei Botany Bay National Park was listed on the New South Wales State Heritage Register on November 29, 2013 having satisfied the following criteria. The place is important in demonstrating the course, or pattern, of cultural or natural history in New South Wales. The geological and botanical features of Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Tora Point Nature Reserve are of state heritage significance for their ability to demonstrate the natural history of the state. Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Tora Point Nature Reserve also have the ability to clearly demonstrate indigenous pre-contact history of the state and to demonstrate aspects of the way of life of the Aboriginal people before European settlement. Kamei Botany Bay Park is of exceptional heritage significance for the state as the place where the shared indigenous and European history of Australia began. It was the place where Lt. James Cook first stepped ashore to claim the country for Britain and the first meeting place between indigenous people and the colonizers. The place plays a central role in the European history of arrival and the history of indigenous dispossession and devastation through illness, land grants, cultivation and development. The meeting of Indigenous and Non-Indigenous Australia is a story that is central to the development of the colony and of symbolic importance to the state. Kamei Botany Bay National Park is historically significant as it was the first point of landing of the first fleet of settlers in Australia and the site of later developments in colonial defences and customs regulation. It also demonstrates the early development of communications in the colony. The park is historically significant as it contains evidence of French exploration during the late 18th century. 
Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Tora Point Nature Reserve are historically significant as the place where Joseph Banks's and Daniel Solander's unique botanical collection was sourced and later classified using the Linnean system of classification. Colonel Peninsula and Tora Point were the sites of the first scientific investigation of the east coast of Australia by British scientists. The former cable station at La Perouse is significant for its role in telegraphic communication connecting New Zealand with Australia by submarine cable for the first time in 1876. The place has a strong or special association with a person, or group of persons, of importance of cultural or natural history of New South Wales's history. Traditional Aboriginal owners of the land and the current Aboriginal community have strong historical association with Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Tora Point Nature Reserve. The place is associated with the Guigal warriors who resisted the arrival of arrival of Cook and the crew of the Endeavour. Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Tora Point Nature Reserve is significant for its association with important European explorers and scientists and their life's work. These include James Cook, Joseph Banks, Daniel Solander, Comte de la Perouse, Comte de Rasfour and Joseph Leput Dagalet. Kamei Botany Bay National Park has an important association with the First Fleet and Governor Arthur Phillip, first governor of NSW. Governor. Macquarie is also associated with the site as he commissioned the erection of the earliest known sandstone tower building in Australia. The Macquarie Watchtower. The place is also associated with French explorers under the command of Comte de la Perouse, who were the first Europeans to stay in the place for an extended period of six weeks. The Colonel Peninsula has an important association with one of the colony's noted entrepreneurs and politicians, Thomas Holt. It also has historic association with members of the Aboriginal community who lived and worked with the first settlers on the Colonel Peninsula. The place also has historical association with the Aboriginal people who lived at La Perouse throughout the 19th and 20th centuries and whose descendants continue to live in the area. The place is important in demonstrating aesthetic characteristics and or a high degree of creative or technical achievement in New South Wales. The cliffs edging the seaside entrance to Kamei Botany Bay National Park in both the northern and southern sections are of state heritage significance for their strong and dramatic landmark. Qualities that take on a symbolic aspect in relation to the historic events that took place after the Endeavour laid anchor inside Botany Bay and Cook stepped onto Darwall land. As well as the natural features of the site there are significant structures which have aesthetic value. The former cable station was designed by the noted colonial architect, James Barnett. The two-story octagonal sandstone tower with castellated turret top built in circa 1811, as a military guardhouse and lookout station, is a distinctive feature on the headland. The Doric Column Memorial to the La Perouse Expedition is another feature of the grouping on the northern headland. On the southern headland a commemorative obelisk marking Captain Cook's landing site erected into 1822 is another distinctive landmark. The Green Peninsula of Tora Point Nature Reserve is an aesthetically appealing natural landscape amidst an otherwise industrial or suburban setting on the south side of Botany Bay. The place has a strong or special association with a particular community or cultural group in New South Wales for social, cultural or spiritual reasons. Both the northern and southern sections of the Botany Bay National Park are of state heritage significance for members of the local and statewide Aboriginal community as it is the site of the first meeting of Indigenous and European cultures. For many people who live locally and throughout the state it is the home of their ancestors, it is the place where their ancestors are buried and where they lived before Europeans arrived. It is also important to Aboriginal people as one of the earliest sites of resistance to British colonisation. The place is also an important site of cultural renewal as the story of the arrival of Cook and those that followed remains an important story within the Aboriginal community. The Tora Point Keeping Place Aboriginal Place and the Darawal Resting Place, Coast Hospital Cemetery repatriation sites are highly significant. Places to members of the La Perouse Local Aboriginal Land Council and the Darawal Aboriginal People Associated with Botany Bay. Visitation to these sites enables Darawal people to maintain close connections to country and ancestors. Cook's Landing Place is important to the European community as it marks the arrival of the British and the establishment of Britain's southernmost colony. It is regarded as the birthplace of the European-Australian nation and the first meeting place of Aboriginal and British communities. The northern shores of Botany Bay, the La Perouse Peninsula, has a very special association for the French community in Australia and French people overseas as it was the last landfall of the noted French explorer, Jean-Francois Galeup de la Perouse. 
The esteem the expedition is held in is marked by the monument to La Perouse commissioned in 1829 by the French and the annual ceremonies celebrating the visit of La Perouse. The place has potential to yield information that will contribute to an understanding of the cultural or natural history of New South Wales. The places of state significance as a place of important technical achievement with the collecting efforts of Banks and Solander who during their visit in 1770 made the first important collection of fauna and flora from Australia. The Banks and Solander collection included many items that had never before been described and classified. The publication of Banks Floralegium, a full-color edition which included illustrations and descriptions of the entire collection from the voyage in 1770, was the culmination of Banks's and Solander's work. Previous archaeological excavations indicate that Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Toro Point Nature Reserve have significance for their high level of archaeological potential. The La Perouse headland is significant as the place where the crew of La Perouse's expedition of exploration made camp was where Joseph Lapotte d'Agolette set up his observatory and made the first astronomical observations in Australia. The place possesses uncommon, rare or endangered aspects of the cultural or natural history of New South Wales. Kamei Botany Bay National Park is a unique place with state-level rarity values as it is the place where the British colonizers first stepped ashore in eastern Australia and the meeting place of indigenous and white colonial Australia. Kamei Botany Bay National Park and the Tora Point Nature Reserve wetlands contain rare remnant vegetation and fauna communities threatened and endangered species and vegetation communities such as, the eastern suburbs Banksia scrub community. The littoral rainforest and Colonel Dune Forest, a vast array of threatened and endangered bird species such as the little tern, frogs such as the green and gold bell frog and mammals like the grey-headed flying fox. The park is an important link in the network of parks and reserves in NSW and plays an important role in conserving the biodiversity of the state. The place is important in demonstrating the principal characteristics of a class of cultural or natural places slash environments in New South Wales. Kamei Botany Bay National Park contains evidence of the intensive occupation by indigenous people before the arrival and settlement by Europeans and is representative of the pre-contact indigenous cultural landscape. The remnant vegetation communities of Tora Point Nature Reserve and Kamei Botany Bay National Park are representative of the original vegetation communities which would have been evident from Sydney Cove to Port Hacking. Kamei Botany Bay National Park is a representative example of a site with an extensive grouping of memorials commemorating highly significant historic events, the historic meeting of indigenous and British cultures. The exploration of Captain James Cook, the important scientific collection work undertaken on the site by Banks and Solander, the noted French explorer Comte de la Perouse and his party. Tora Point Nature Reserve and Kamei Botany Bay National Park represent the role of parks and reserves in the conservation of biodiversity. This Wikipedia article contains material from Kamei Botany Bay National Park and Tora Point Nature Reserve, entry number 01918N. The New South Wales State Heritage Register published by the State of New South Wales and Office of Environment and Heritage 2018 under CC by 4. Zero license, accessed on June 2, 2018. Thanks for watching.